Hello, welcome to the channel. Today on this service segment, we've got a 2016 uh, Ford Mustang GT Gen 2 5.0 uh, V8 with the Roush supercharger on it. Uh, we're gonna be doing spark plugs on it today. All right, so this may vary, these first few steps may vary depending on your setup. Um, so kind of keep that in mind. For this setup, the first thing we're gonna do is unconnect these electrical connectors that go into the air box. Um, that way we can remove the air box from the vehicle. So I'm just gonna find the connector tab. These, they've got these locking tabs. You're just gonna release it with the screwdriver or, pop or pick, and then you're gonna push down on the black portion to actually release the connector. And you might need to take the screwdriver and put it under the connector uh, tab to release it. Next, we're gonna release the air box. We've got a 10 millimeter bolt down here. Uh, we're also gonna release the clamp up at the throttle body. And then depending on what your setup is, again, this one's got an oil separator on it. We're gonna release these fittings on the uh, left and right of the intake. Right. Release the clamp. Gonna need a flat blade screwdriver. The clamp on this particular throttle body is an eight millimeter socket. I'm just gonna release that. You don't need to back the clamp all the way out, you just want to loosen it enough so that you can remove it from the throttle body itself. And we can go ahead and disconnect any of the lines that are going to the, uh, the intake. I might have to actually remove the whole JLT. Schmat! Work smarter, not harder. So that was our uh, driver's Good. side oil separator. Oh, into that thing. So now we're going to disconnect the vacuum line and this fitting right there. And now we should be able to remove the entire intake air assembly. Just be careful that you don't get any of the snag on the actual air box. And then just put that to the side. Here are the uh, spark plugs we're going with today. They are the NGK Iridium IX plugs. Here's the part number. This is going to vary based on your build, so again, it may not apply to you, but this is what we're going with today. One stage coder. They have to be gapped to between 0.28 and 0.32 uh, inches, so we've already gone and gapped our plugs because that takes a while, so we're not gonna include that in the video. Maybe we can make a video on uh, how to gap your plugs properly, but that'll be for a later date. So next, we're going to remove the throttle body. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is remove the two connectors on the left and right side of the throttle body. We've got the red locking tabs again. Just release the tab and push down on the connector itself. And for the panes. Oh, come on. All right, there we go. Once you release the connectors, we can go ahead and remove the four eight millimeter bolts on the throttle body. And now we're just gonna kind of tuck these harnesses out of the way to get access to the actual cover here. And that you're just gonna pull up on, pull back, slide it out, toss that to the side. Feel your uh, four ignition coils. They've got the black connectors with the red tabs. Just release all the locking tabs. and then release each of the connectors. Just kind of use the screwdriver or the pick and go inside underneath the connector to give some extra. Okay, okay. All right. 
Got all the connectors released. Then we can release the four mounting bolts. remove our coils. They just pull up and out. Just going to take a quick look at them, make sure they're not cracked, swollen. And this is bank two on the driver's side, so this is cylinders five, six, seven, and eight. It's a little bit difficult to get to, but there you go. So, that. That was the one that had the cylinder. Yeah, this so time. we're gonna rotate that one up to the front. All the coils are now released and removed, so we can go ahead and insert our 5 eighths spark plug socket. Break them all free. I have found that slow, steady pressure works best so that you don't break a knuckle. Of course, I can dig myself. Free, so now we can go ahead and uh, move them. Is that tool you're using made in America? This is Milwaukee. They look like. Somebody's been running some boostane, race gas. They're definitely a... Let me go zoom. Yeah, it looks better under light than it actually literally looks. It looks pretty, yeah. pretty bad. Uh. All right, so a good thing to practice is when you're installing spark plugs is you always want to check the ones that came out and compare them to the ones that you're putting in. Uh, the biggest things you're gonna to wanna to look for is obviously the thread depth. You wanna make sure that the amount of threads is the same. Uh, you're also gonna to wanna to make sure the electrode is the same as well as the amount of porcelain uh, between the electrode and the, um, the outside ground is the same. Uh, unless you're instructed to go colder or warmer on the spark plugs, we all know parts guys, sometimes they're not the best, and they'll give you the one. We got the right part plugs, so now we can go ahead and install these. All right, so we've got our spark plug in our spark plug socket, and we're gonna just install them into each cylinder by hand. Always put your spark plugs in by hand first, as far as you can go. This prevents possibly cross-threading the threads inside the cylinder head, which, if you do that, have a bad day. Once you've got your spark plugs installed, you're gonna take your torque wrench. Uh, here we've got our torque wrench with our spark plug socket on it, and we've set it to 12 foot-pounds.
All right, so now we've got the spark plugs all torqued. We're gonna go ahead and reinstall our coils. Just kind of push them in and then just, you know, get the connector out of the way, fully seat each one. Now I can go down the line and engage all the connectors. Basically just reversing the process that we did to get here. But you reversed the coal because it's cylinder eight, right? Yep. Yes, I did. Yeah, cylinder eight coil is now in cylinder five. Now we're gonna reinstall our coil mounting bolts. Now we can reinstall the throttle body. Make sure the gasket is still present. Once you get all four started, then you can tighten them down. They all bottom out. You can go ahead and just give it a little, a little bit of an eighth of a turn. And we can go ahead and reinstall our connectors. Before you put the uh, intake back on, you're going to want to install your coil cover. Kind of fish it back in. Uh, you may have to move it around. Wiggle it. Just Wiggle a it. little bit. But it'll self-align and pop back into place and you should be able to apply a little bit of pressure to it and it shouldn't go anywhere. Once you have that done, then we can reinstall the intake. Kind of put the cone, in, cone inside first. Line up the uh, intake with the throttle body. You may have to move the clamp out of the way to uh, make sure it engages. Once you think you have it, you just kind of trace your finger around it. Make sure that it's not folded or rolled underneath the throttle body or anything like that. And then position your clamp. Leave yourself about a quarter inch of space between the, uh, the throttle body and then the edge of the clamp. Tighten the clamp down. Connect any fittings and hoses. that you disconnected from the intake. And then any electrical connectors that you um, disconnected, fish those back into the intake box. So I'm just gonna fish the connectors, or connector in this case, back in the intake box, fasten that. Any miscellaneous vacuum lines or hoses, reattach those. And then lastly in this portion, we can go ahead and reinstall our oil separator. While you have it off, it's a good time to empty it. Okay. 
So now, start with bank two. If you do have an oil separator or anything on it, you're gonna go ahead and get that out of the way so you can release the uh, coil cover. You can leave it attached to the line that's on. Then just release the coil cover by pulling up on it. And you'll have to remove the oil cap for a brief second to allow it to slip out. And then just set this to the side. Next, we're just gonna do the same procedure that we did the other side. Release all the red safety tabs on each coil. And then using this pocket screwdriver, work it under the tab. And repeat the process. Down the line. Once all those release, we're gonna go ahead and remove the bolts. And for that back one, you're gonna need a, a lower profile tool. Because they don't give you much clearance between that. Got all four bolts released. Now we can pop each coil out. The back one, you kind of got to come up at an angle. We'll repeat that. So for this back one, it's kind of tricky. You kind of come as far as out as you can until you hit this fabric here. And then you kind of got to put a little angle to it and come up and out straight to the top. Now we're going to go ahead and break all of our spark plugs loose. So for this bank, I like to break it down into two pieces. Do the first three, and then I do the back one last. So we're gonna snug these first three. All right, so this back one is kind of a trickier one. What you're gonna wanna do is kind of find a shorter extension, about three, four inches, and attach that to your spark plug socket. And you're gonna wanna drop that in the spark plug well first, and then take another three inch long extension and made it up while it's already installed. And then you can go ahead and break it free. To remove the plug, you kind of reverse the process. You break it down, pull the plug out with the short, with one of the extensions. So this is the setup in order to get it out. Put the spark plug socket with the one extension in first, seat it to the plug, then come in with your second extension and drill it out. And then to remove it out of the well, remove the top half of the extension and then the spark plug with the socket. And that's just for the back one. The other three come out normally. Hey, B. This hey. car faster than yours? Faster? In a straight line? Maybe. Maybe. All right, so we've got our spark plug installed here. Again, start it by hand. And then we'll torque them. Again, 12 foot pounds. Alright, so 
Now this is the tricky one. Pay attention. Because you don't have enough room to kind of hold on to this when you drop this in the spark plug well and you don't want to just let it go in the spark plug well because then you could damage the electrode and the spark plugs that we just gapped may not have the same gap anymore. So the easiest way to do it is to you're gonna install it into the well and then once you can't reach it with your fingers anymore, you're just gonna keep a couple fingers on it and apply pressure to the side of the well. And kind of slide your finger in the spark plug socket with it until it's resting against the cylinder head. Then we can go ahead and install our other extension. And then we can torque it. Once it seats. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our coils. And for the back one, kind of reverse the process, kind of put it in straight up and down, and then just kind of rock it, slide it in. Kind of rotate the oil cap and release it just just enough to slide it in behind it. You can go and re-engage that. Fully seat until you hear it kind of pop into place. And then if you have your oil separator, you can go ahead and reinstall that as well. Always tug back on these like you just saw, make sure they fully engage. And that completes the install portion. Now we're gonna go ahead and start the vehicle up, make sure it idles and runs properly.